Let's see. I want to make sure that I'm, I'm recording completely. Can you guys hear? Testing, testing. Awesome. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look at your practice problems, and I want to make sure that we put a couple points on there because I'm worried that you guys aren't going to be able to see it the way it is right now. And then I'm a, I don't want you to be confused. So on the back side of your practice problem, that would be this one, day three, introduction to cube root functions. I'm going to go ahead and turn that over. And number seven, I want you to add a point. You should only have two points. Make a point also on the Y axis right there. So you have three points of reference. Do you see what I'm saying? This is what I forgot to do for period five. Do you need me to make it bigger? We're good? All right, ready for number eight? Okay. Number eight, it has three points of reference, but you need the third one down, I'm sorry, the fourth one down here. So what you want to do is you want to go right past four, negative four, and put a point right there in the middle of that box, of that grid. Doesn't that look symmetric now? Okay. Ready for number nine? Number nine, it has these two, but it's missing this one. So go ahead and kind of start going towards negative four, but right in the middle of one and zero. And this is actually, they're counting by twos. Do you see that? Yeah. If I had realized that, I probably would have ditched these graphs and made new ones. Number 10. Nope, we're not ditching them because they're going to help you. Number 10 is fine. Do you see how it's got all three points that you need? All righty. So that's that. Let's get into the lesson. Okay, this is what I failed to do yesterday. This is a square. Huh. <laughs> it just tells you what my mind's like right now, okay? This is a square. If I tell you the square is a 2 by 2, then it has an area of 4. Correct? I'm sure. If I tell you it's a 2 by 2, then I know that it has an area of 4. A square root is finding the root of the square. So the root of an area of 4 is 2. Right? That's why they call it a square root. So if this one, if I had 9, what would be my sides? A 3 by 3. And algebraically, the square root of 9 is 3. Look at it. It's almost like it's a square. Right? Like that? The root of 9 is 3. Wow. So the root of x is they would cancel out. I don't know what it is, so the side of the square is the root of x. Right? What? Is it, I mean, that's what, that's what these sides are. Isn't this the root of 9? Right? You see it now? And this is really the root of 4? Okay, are we good? Awesome. That's what I wish I would have said last period. All right, now we're going into cubes. What's the area of this cube? 
27. Right? Not this not the surface area, guys. The inside of it. The volume of it on the inside is gonna be twenty-seven. <laughs> so the root of a cube with an area of twenty-seven is three. Right? This is a three by three by three. Three times three times three is twenty-seven. Right? What about this one? It's going to be 64. So the cubed root of 64 is? Because? 64 is 4 times 4 times 4. Or 4 cubed. And remember when we have a cube that matches the, cu the cube here, then it gets to be simplified to just 4. So this is 4, this is 4, and this is 4. Ready? So if this is area is x, right? Then this not square cube root of x. The side is the cubed root of x. Okay, so that's where we're going to graph cube roots today. Now, the reason why you guys probably don't remember stuff like this right here is because we is because as 7th grade and 8th grade and Algebra 1 teachers, we try and get you to do this. I'm going to put a, I'm not going to put anything, so it's a square, right? And so we do things like this. Remember that? And you guys are horrible at it. And you don't remember it probably because you blocked it out. What we should have done is taught you things like this, right? Conceptual things that actually make sense instead of exponent rules that you hate and don't remember. And we teach them to you over and over and over again and reteach it and reteach it and reteach it and you still don't get it. That's what happens. We waste a lot of time doing stuff like that. Isn't it? That's why what I'm doing on Monday and Tuesday is, is going to be um, going out that's what we're doing our training for that new algebra class next year. So we're going to ditch that. All right. So yesterday we did quadratic function. We did its inverse, which is square root function, right? Today we're going to do the inverse of a cubic function, which is a cubed root function. Aren't you excited? It's going to be very conceptual, right? It's, it's going to make sense because we're going to use structure to build it. Okay? All right. So yesterday, we learned about square root functions. Can you guys come up with some? It's fine. Can you name some facts about this? Madison. Uh, it's, vertex zero zero. it's vertex is zero, zero. What does that mean if it's vertex is zero, zero? There's no, there's no translation. No translation on... No translation of H or K or A, but A is not a translation. What's A? A dilation. So vertex translation. There's no translations. We're not moving on the x-axis and we're not moving on the y-axis. 
It's an inverse of what? Of x what? Nope, squared. It's an inverse of x squared. Close. Like in your thinking. What else, Jonathan? Just calling you out. Got anything else? I heard something about the stretch. Is there a stretch? Stretches. There is no stretch, right? No stretch. No. It's domain. You guys are getting more than seven. It's domain is x has to be greater than or equal to zero. What about its range? Y is greater than or equal to zero. How about its magic numbers? Let's name its magic numbers. So if I square zero, I get zero. If I square one, I get one. If I square, sorry, we're not squaring though. We are. <laughs> we're square rooting. Right? So normally we would square two and we would get four, but that's a square, that's a um, quadratic function. Yeah. So we're square rooting, so we do the opposite. We transpose them, right? Yeah. So instead of doing two, four, we do four, two. So the square root of four is two. Remember that? That's what we did yesterday. Then nine is three. Nope, we don't do five. That would be a decimal. We don't graph decimals, right? Okay, so that was yesterday. Now we're going to do cubic. We only got six? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven. No. Okay, are we good? All right, so today we're going to do a cubic. So a cubic, if I graph it, is if I cube 1, I get 1. If I cube 2, I get 8. If I cube negative 1, I get y. Right? Okay. So that being said, and if I, if I cube negative 2, I get negative 8. So this is your cubic function. I have to label it because when I do the inverse, I have to label the inverse. That'll be, the, that'll be what you guys will make a mistake on. Oh, here's the other one that I caught in this period. Here's the first mistake that people make when they graph these. Instead of going over 1, up 1, and then over 4, up 2, they'll go over 1, up 1, and then they'll stay on this point, and they'll go over 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1. I'm sorry, up 2. That's what they'll do. Do you see what they're doing? Yeah. They're doing the magic numbers, but they're not doing them from the origin. They're going over 1, up 1, over 4, up 2. Okay, so what's the square root of 3? Something in between 1 and 2. Oh. Right? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But So we don't do those because then we're just like eyeballing them. So we only do the perfect squares. Make sense? Nope. Okay. So the second thing that you got mistake that you'll make is this one. So now I'm going to do the opposite or the inverse. The inverse over y equals x, which I know I just have to transpose my points. Cubic functions are even easier than square root functions because they have more points in common. Check this out. When I take 0, 0 and I take the inverse, I still have 0, 0. When I do 1, 1 and I take the inverse, I still have 1, 1. When I do negative 1, negative 1, I still have Negative 1, negative 1. So the only points that change is 2, 8 is now going to be 8, 2. 
and negative 8, negative 2. And I have to, this is the second thing that will always happen. You'll forget to label it. You have to tell me that this is the inverse function. If you just graph them, I don't know if you know which one's which. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so list the coordinates as ordered pairs. I think I'm going to skip over this part. Because all I'm going to do is ask you if it's a function. Is it a function still? It's going to be a function. So cubic functions, when they get, when you take the inverse, those are going to be functions still. Okay, so we don't have to have any restriction on the x or the y, or in the domain or on the range. Only the quadratic ones. Okay? All right. So let's go backwards. I don't like this slide. Um, we did this yesterday, but we did it with squares. Now we're going to do it with cubes. I think that I think it would help you guys to just do this for just a little bit. All right, so here's your parent function. So you have this in front of you. So let's do the first one. Our parent function, what are my magic numbers? Zero, zero, one, one, and... No, 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 that's quadratic, oh, I'm sorry. right? We're thinking cubic, two, eight, but that's, cu it's, that's cubing something. Now we're going to take the cubed root, so we're going to start with the eight. So the cube of eight is two. Negative one, negative one, negative eight, negative two. So zero, zero, one, one, eight, two. What's the plus 2 going to do? Move it to the left 2. And then I have over 1, cube 1, which is 1. Over 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And the cube of 8 is 2. And I'm not going to, I can graph this one over 1, down 1. But I'm not going to graph the other one because it's off the graph. And you're going to find that with a lot of these because they're so big. You know what I mean? That's why I wanted you guys to do those points on that homework or that practice. Because I wanted to make sure that you could clearly see where the points were. All right, let's do this one. What's going to happen to this one if I go with, what does this two do? No. Up two. Why up two? because it's on the outside. So this one, my origin is going to shift up two. And then my magic numbers are still the same. Over one, up one. Over eight, up two. Over one, down one. Over eight, down two. Yes. Because if you... The, the cubed root of 8 is, sorry, is 2. Here's your magic cubes up here. You see them? Do you guys see your magic cubes up here? There's your perfect cubes. Ready for the last one? What are my transformations? Sorry, translation. To the right 2 and down 2. To the right two and down two. And then I go over one, up one. I, that's going to go off the graph. I don't bother going in the right direction. And I go left one, down one. And then left from my origin. Left how many? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And down two. Because the cube of eight is two. Can I move on? Okay. 
So this one has a stretch. So there is no vertical or horizontal translation. It's just my origin stays at zero, zero. But now instead of going over one, up one, what do you think I'm going to do? Over one, up two, it's going to stretch. And over one, down two. And then I'm going to have to go over eight and not up two, but up four. So over eight, up one, two, three, four, and over eight, and down four. We don't need to do number six. You know why? Because it's the same as number five. Well, what's the square root, sorry, cubed root of 8? Yeah. So this is the same graph as number 5. What about number 7? It's the same as 6, only it's pointing what? Pointing, uh, be frowning, yeah. right? Just like a quadratic, if it had a negative in front of it, it would be yeah. frowning down. So it's going to be negative 2 cubed root x. So instead of going to the right over 1, up 1, I'm going to go to the right and down 1. And I'm going to go over 8 and down 2 and in the opposite direction this way. So it looks like number five without a stretch and reflected over the x-axis. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. There's an A. Do I have to, let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's look what happens with the last one. With the last one, the negative is going to stay inside. Is that true? No. Why can we pull that negative out? Good. Because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. When we have negatives inside of square of cubed roots, they can come out. So this one actually looks exactly the same way as this one does. Right? So on square roots, it matters if the negative sign's inside of them, right? Because it makes it go, on a, if it was a square root, it would turn it this way. Right? If the negative's inside, and then it would turn it this way if it's on the outside. That's square roots. But cubed roots, they look the same. Okay. So eight looks just like seven. Are we ready to tackle these? Yeah. Okay. Let's get your whiteboards out. I can. Madison, you want to put it all the way over, please? You've been distracted the whole period. I'm going to keep it till the end. <coughs> Thank you. Already? Okay, let's do this quickly. That was because of all my whining earlier. Thank you.
I didn't mean to whine that much. I just had to get it out. Okay. Can you guys do this one on your whiteboard? I want to know what this function looks like. It's a cubic. You're coming up with the equation for it. Yep, you got it. Yep. You guys got this for the most part. We're good. Okay. So this is shifting to the left, too. It's this point right here, right? This point is shifting. This is the, my origin. Yeah, using red with that is helping lots, right? Look, there we go. So that point right there is shifting to the left, too, and down, too. To the left, too, is going to be a plus 2 on the inside. And down, too, is going to be down, too, on the outside. Does it have a stretch? No stretch. It's just over one, up one. So I just don't, I don't need to put anything in front. Jonathan, you want to do parentheses? You could do parentheses. You could. Yep, you can. Does that make it, is that easier to understand for you? Like that? Good. And the second one? Does this one have a vertical or a horizontal stretch? I'm sorry, not stretch. Translation. There's nothing here, but you don't need to write zero, right? And there's nothing up or down. But my stretch is, you guys got this. Okay, you guys can have the rest of the time for your own. And I will see you till Wednesday. I oh, know, I missed you too.